This video is part of my full course on advanced network hacking. For more information and to get a nice discount on the course, check out the links in the description. All right, now we've seen some pretty scary stuff in this section. In this lecture, I wanna talk about how to prevent some of these attacks or secure your networks from them. So the first thing that we spoke about was captive portals and we've seen how we can gain access to these networks using three methods. And even if uh, the first two methods didn't work, then the third will rely on the users and will gain access. As shown, that proves that captive portals are not secure at all. So in order to get the functionality of a captive portal, but stay secure, the best thing to do is to use WPA Enterprise with a radius server, and then give each user an individual username and password. This way, you can still prevent some people from connecting, you can still disable some of the passwords. You can control these users and see each what each one of them is doing. But at the same time, the people authenticate using the WPA or WPA2 authentication procedure. So it's much more secure. The data is going to be sent encrypted. So people that are not connected to the network cannot sniff it. They can't just connect and do ARP spoofing. And at the same time, you're getting the same functionality that you'll get from a captive portal. Next, we've seen how easy it is to crack web with SKA, with shared key authentication. So it goes without saying, don't use web, regardless of how you implement it, even if you think that you implemented it in a more secure manner, just don't use web, period. Next is WPS. And we've seen how we can force some routers to cuff their password or their pin. Again, there are secure ways of implementing WPS if you disable push button authentication and lock after a number of failed attempts. But again, if you want to be secure, just disable WPS. That'll just make Reaver not work at all. Then we see more advanced word list attacks. So if web is not used, WPS is enabled. We're talking about you using WPA or WPA2 now. And the only way to gain access to your network is using a word list attack. And we've seen advanced word list attacks where we can use big words lists and save and restore our progress and use the GPU for cracking to make it faster. Now all of these are still word list attacks. So if you use a long password, say minimum of 16 characters with letters, numbers, and symbols, then it's gonna be very, very difficult to get your password even using the methods that I showed you right now. Obviously, the longer the password, the harder it is to get the key for it because it's a word list attack. So the key has to be there in the word list that the hacker is using. Now, the last method that we see, and we said that this is the last resort, is using uh, an evil twin attack. And we've seen how we can use that to gain access to WPA or WPA2 networks. And we also seen how to use that to gain access to captive portals. Now, in both of these methods, we're relying on the humans, on the users that use the network. So when it goes down to that, then there's nothing you can do in terms of the software or the hardware. The hacker is literally exploiting the people that use the network. So the only thing you can do in this case is educate your users. So if you have a small group of users, you can just have a talk and tell them here, look, this is an attack that can be used. Be careful from it. If you get deauthenticated or disconnected from your network, make sure when you connect that you connect to the same network and make sure that the network you're connecting to is actually using encryption. So it's not an open network. Also tell them never enter the network key in a web interface because as we've seen when we're running the evil twin attack, we always ask for the password in a web interface. So make sure that your users know they should never enter the key in a web interface. And if they already entered the key, they'll never be asked for it again unless they clicked on forgot the network, which they should know. So to summarize, if you want to secure your network from the gaining access attacks that we've seen so far, first, don't use captive portals. Implement WPA Enterprise if you want a similar functionality. Two, never use web. Three, disable WPS. 
4. Use WPA or WPA2 with a complex password of letters, characters, numbers, and symbols. 5. Educate your users to make sure they won't be victims of a social engineering attack.